Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Bowman Draft Baseball. Eight box jumbo, pick your team number seven from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Here it is right here. Big thanks to all of these lovely people for getting in on the action on a Tuesday, January 4th. Happy New Year, 2022. Ryan Redmond ended up with last spot mojo and pick your team seven. Remember, we did number six last night on Monday night. So here on a Tuesday, we did five and seven. We just ran out of time for break eight, but that'll be that'll be uh, that'll be tomorrow. All right. So just off camera, we were kind of, and we're also watching the Lakers. Hopefully, they're going to hang on to beat the Kings. They're up one sixteen, one twelve with a minute ten left. Still very close. And just off camera, we were talking about this kind of heavy case. Ooh, and one? Nice. Just off camera, we were talking about the Fanatics, of, uh, you know, officially purchasing tops for upwards of $500 million. Tops Candy Division, although, is something that they did not purchase. And I think Tops Confections will be, uh, will be rebranded. I think they still have, like, Ring Pop and... Bazooka Joe gun, some other other stuff that they that they still run. That they low key are pretty pretty successful, still successful with. Rex was asking. Now will will tops. Now will tops. Uh, now Rex is wondering will tops expand their candy division. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I think they're pretty... I think they still do okay with whatever candies they have. So I just kind of think that they're just going to... I don't know if they really have any plans for like world domination or anything like that. Like what would they buy? I think so many... There's not a lot of independent candy. I mean, there might be. But are, are there like any sort of mainstream independent candies that they've been, uh, that they could purchase, I guess, put under, under the Topps umbrella? I feel like most candies are, are kind of, are like owned by like large conglomerates already, like Hershey and Nestle and all that stuff. Well, they haven't been winning a lot of games without AD, Chris. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sam was wondering earlier what, what's going to happen with the WWE license, and then Sam Banks found an article from October saying that WWE is going to go to Panini. All right, now the big question is what's, what's Panini going to do once their football and basketball licenses start to, when, when that comes to a close? So still a lot of lot of a uh, lot of plates that are being spun. There's Colton Kowser, purple chrome to 250. So we'll see how it all uh, shakes out. Yeah, ring pops is definitely tops. What else? Someone look that up. That'd be interesting to see what candies tops still has. And all those Hunter Davis uh, paper will go to Mark and the Pirates. I think he picked up the Pirates in almost all the breaks. Jeremy Della Rosa to four ninety nine. That'll be for Bill and the Nats. And our first autograph is Hunter Goodman. This good man is going to go to Drew, the Colorado Rockies. I really have no idea real time. I, I know for sure that Ring Pops is definitely under the Tops umbrella, but I don't know what other candy or Bazooka Gum. You know, and 
Maybe uh, maybe that other pinkish double bubble gum in the yellow raptor wrapper. Maybe that still tops. The Lakers, 119-115. Ooh, and a Henry Davis. Thought that was going to be an autograph. Is that number? I don't know why that was flipped around, Mark, but maybe it's something a little extra especial. I think Topps candy would be concession sand related candy? I don't think so. I think that's dominated by like the bigger names. I, don't, I really don't know. Someone look it up. There's Freddy Valdez, purple paper to 250. Maybe Hubba Bubba bubble tape? Maybe that's under the Topps umbrella? This is Jordan Lawler. Maybe all of these just got turned around for some reason. It's only paper that doesn't ship, though. But these guys do. So the three guys, three paper guys that do ship are these three right there. It's your number one overall pick, too. And a Luke Murphy, Aqua Lava Refractor, 30 out of 199. These Lava Refractors look really sharp. Angels, Marty with the Halos. Michael McGreevy, blue paper to 150. You know, I'm thinking, Rex and everybody else, uh, now with the candy division of tops, kind of spun off into its own small operation, its own independent operation. I wonder if now would be the perfect time for me to to, to write like a, a spec script for my Bazooka Joe movie. You know, and I'll be like, hey, let's make it let's make a movie. They could be executive producers. Cause they'll be like, hey, what are we gonna do with just just candy? Maybe like movie time. There's Cameron Colley, blue chrome to 150. And there's Jordan McCants, Marlins. That goes to Ryan Redman and the Fish. Won that in a filler. Real time saying Fleer is actually double. That's right. I do remember a Fleer logo on Double Bubble. Right. The blue crown Fleer on the wrapper. That's right. As competition. So who owns Fleer? Chewing gum now. I wonder if Topps actually owns that. All right, so there's our first box. Remember, I will do an autograph recap after I give away break credit. You know, the, 
originally when Michael Eisner and his investment group or whatever bought Tops, one of the reasons why they wanted to buy it was to see if they could take the Bazooka Joe property to take the Bazooka Joe property and turn it into a movie. Like they did with like, you know, when people were like, Pirates of the Caribbean movie, how could you make a Pirates of the Caribbean out of, out of a, off a ride at Disneyland? You know? So there was all that sort of commentary. Like, how could you do that? But it turned out to be a super successful film franchise. So I think Eisner definitely thought that they could take some of the Topps properties and possibly develop a Bazooka Joe movie with those with those old comic characters. I don't know if it ever really actually... I don't know if it didn't actually work out because obviously we have not seen a Bazooka Joe movie. I don't know how seriously they, they, they took that. But... Right, yeah, that's what trading cards were like back in the day, Rex. It's funny, Rex is commenting, it's funny thing that Topps was originally gum. You know, and, and yeah, it was trading cards were a way to sell gum. Just like, you know, the old tobacco cards, the trading cards and the tobacco and cigarettes. They were, they were there to help sell cigarettes. Trading cards weren't the main, weren't the main thing. I think it's the perfect time, Rex. I think what I need to do is maybe win the lottery so I can I can take like a few months off to write this project. And then I could write the Bazooka Joe movie. I think I need sub Joe P. Yeah, Bazooka Joe. Sometimes so I think I need to buy a lot of that can I need to read the comics so I can get a better grasp of the characters and what they're like. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll go to Amazon. I'm sure I could buy like five pounds of, of Bazooka Joe gum, right? I'm sure Bossman might still have connections over at Tops. Could send us a, a case of Bazooka Joe gum. But I have to read those comics, I feel like, to get a real grasp of, of what their vibe was about, what their characters were about, how they relate to each other, and then be able to, to write a some sort of fun national treasure kind of adventure movie, you know? It'd be something loose, it'd be fun, family friendly, but I'm definitely thinking adventure. There's Pedro Pineda. I'm thinking like, uh, I don't know. Maybe some sort of, my initial idea now I'll have to read the comics to see if this even works. I haven't, I haven't read any of those comics in ages, but I have to see if they are... Uh, maybe they could be some sort of detective group. There's Jackson Wolf to 99. EA with the Padres. Oh, and the autograph, Bryce Miller. Ma uh, M's, Mariners, Robert Throne. Like a, kind of like a Scooby-Doo type cast. But figuring out different kinds of adventures, crime crime fighters. I need to contact Quentin Tarantino. Why? So he can steal my idea, Rex. F that. Quentin Tarantino has enough things going on. I'll do it myself. There's Po Yu Chen to one ninety nine for the Pirates. That'll be for Mark. I mean, I I I wouldn't mind Quentin Tarantino. Once, once it's mostly said and done, if he can, he can punch up the script a little bit. We'll hire him for punch-ups. Nice. All right. Nice one for the Lakers. And we've got Ryan Cusick. For the Braves, Marty was talking about how he hasn't seen any Braves. Well, finally, here's one. I don't know if Lushy McBear fits in the world of, of Bazooka Joe Rex. I think I think he's his own thing. That's more of like a, 
an Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, Adventure Time kind of kind of character. That's something I have to flesh out a little bit more, but. I think Bazooka Joe, I would definitely have live action. Yeah, they they are doing big things. They're uh, what are 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 they? Do they have a? Are they one game over five hundred now? You think Westbrook's underrated, Chris? I feel like I think a lot of people would argue that Westbrook's overrated, but I think he's, I think he's rated right right where he is. He's a pretty great player. Wait, did you did you cover Oliver? I think it was it was like six and a half. I, I actually didn't see spy on what the final score was. There's Mika Bell to 499 for the Phillies. That's going to be for Mark. There's JT Schwartz to 199, Aqua Lava. For the Mets, Ryan Lind for the Metropolitans. Oh, there, yeah. Then I feel like the game they lost, Joe P., they should have won that too. But I think they're hanging tough, missing a lot of key pieces. I think they really counted on like Kendrick Nunn to be playing a lot of regular minutes, and he hasn't even played significant minutes yet. So it's kind of coming together. We'll see. A lot of still a lot of season to go, but but I like that they're hanging tough. You know, I'd like to see both the Suns and both the Lakers to be 100% healthy, Joe P, and then Western Conference Finals. That would be exciting. That's that would be an exciting six or seven games. And at hundred percent, give the people give give the people what they want. There's Isaac Pacheco, seventy one out of seventy one speckle autograph. Like I would love to see like. Fully 100% Anthony Davis banging under the board with the fully 100% DeAndre Ayton. You know what I mean? That would be a great battle to see. You know, scrappy town Horton Tucker trying to guard Devin Booker or something like that. I mean, that, that, would, be, that would be a lot of fun. I think that's what the Lakers organization is hoping for is that is that everyone just kind of kind of gets healthy at the right time is the idea is the hope I think and then anything could happen all right next box I think they're starting to I think they're starting to... Yeah, I know. Well, I, I think it's going to be difficult for everyone to get healthy at the same time. But, yeah. That, well, that's the challenge. They are a little old. But if they can catch lightning in a bottle, I think that's really what they're hoping for. I think defense is really what Frank Vogel kind of what he kind of uh, is is good at. So, but he has he has complicated defensive schemes. If the team as a as a team, if they can if they can get together and just really figure out the defense, if they work on that. 
That would be good to see towards the last month of the season or so. Hanging tough like like new kids on the block, right? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I really I really think that Westbrook still is real is still like trying to figure out how he's supposed to play. I don't think he's ever been on a team like this, you know. You know, usually he's just been all right, Westbrook, you, you take you take a zillion shots, you know, and you you take over the game, but I think he's kind of figuring it out. Trade deadlines in February. I think he's, I think he's. Uh, it's, that's about a month or so from now. So I think it'll be interesting to see how how the trade deadline works. I think the Lakers moving Rondo, opening freeing up a little cap space here and there. There's Jordan Groshans gold to fifty. That'll be for John and Toronto. Our shipping team will sleep and top load all of those, of course, before they're sorted and shipped out. Just in the interest of time, we want to move a little more quickly. I know. that's Well, that's why, Joe, I think if, if, Westbrook, if Westbrook does adjust to the system, to, to the way the Lakers' are, the roster is constructed, that's Frank Vogel, coach of the year. But I saw a stat on the on the pregame show, um, Joe, and they were saying, and this is this kind of surprised me. I didn't think it was this much, but the the Lakers have have started twenty different starting lineups, which is most in the NBA. There's Alex Benellis, uh, eighty eight out of four ninety nine. I mean, how many? How many? Uh, you know how many time, how many different lines has these have the Suns rolled out? You know, maybe I, I would say maybe like what eight or nine different lineups, maybe double digits. There's West Cath to 499. Oh, Colton Kowser ships out too. So all those Colton Kowser papers will go to UEA. Uh, I haven't seen any of the. Uh, I haven't seen Marcelo Mayer yet. Maybe I missed some, but Matthew Sherrod will find as many of those as possible. Um, And, we'll, and obviously all those Henry Davises will go to you, Mark Bissett. There's Max Mo Costa. Purple paper for the Rangers. It's 90 out of 250 for SKS.
There's Christian Encarnacion Strand. Twins, John Alfies. Yeah, Malik Monk did have a good fourth quarter. I think Malik Monk was a good pickup by the Lakers. Sort of a sort of younger on an old Lakers team, and can can really seems to be blossoming a little bit, which I which I like. You know what? I know what's going on, Rex. It's those, it's those, uh, it's those haboobs, those big dust storms in Arizona that just drive people crazy. You know, it's like a, like a Twilight Zone episode. There's Will Bednar, gold paper, 28 out of 50 for EA and the Giants. Yeah, I listen. As an individual player, I lo I'm a big fan of Russell Westbrook. You know, UCLA guy, just like the way he plays the game, blah, 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 blah. But when the Lakers did pick him up, I was kind of like, huh. <laughs> you know, I was like, it'll be interesting to see how that works. SKS with Cleveland. This is for you. Yeah, 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 Joe P. Your sons are playing well. They're pretty good. We get it. What else? What else do you want? Do you want to? You want? You want? You want a medal? You want a participation trophy? Uh, let, let's wait for them to to win a win a title. Then you can brag about your sons. Yeah, that Sal, Joe P saying that Sal Freelich is a pretty solid player. He's high on this guy, 15th overall pick for the Brew Crew. That goes to Chris Whaley, by the way, and the Brewers. Maybe we'll find some ink for him as well. Oliver, Oliver is a King Sacramento Kings guy. He's like, ah, I'll take falling short in the finals. <laughs> Why is Sal Freelich so so uh, a hot market commodity at the moment, Joe P? I mean, Joe, come on. You got to admit that that there were some key injuries on every team they uh, on every team they faced in their playoff run. I mean, still they still have to win games. I get it. So what he was? What are you saying, Joe? He was rated as like a top pick, but just kind of fell to the fifteenth pick. Is that is that what you're saying?
Wow, a one out of five, Cooper Kinney. That's a train whistle, ladies and gentlemen. Red chrome for Anthony Liu and the Tampa Bay Rays. Anthony, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Nice, and there's Calvin Ziegler for the Mets, Ryan Lind. Oh, the bubble was the most difficult thing. I would argue, Oliver, that that was twice as hard as a regular finals. <laughs> I actually think it was. No, I know. You could probably make an argument every year for how teams get through the, get through the finals. Any championship, really. A lot of woulda, coulda, shouldas. Maybe if, if that happened, that happened. I mean... You know, you can only play the teams that are in front of you, so. So. That's just, in all seriousness, that's just the way it goes. So I can't, I can't, I can't really complain too much. A lot of players in sports named Cooper lately. Name him, Rex. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cooper Bowman. Cooper Manning. Logan Henderson, Aqua, 144 to 199 for the Brew Crew. Another one for Chris. Now, I agree, Joe P. Suns are pretty well constructed. Pretty well constructed roster. I think. Uh, I think the only thing that could screw up the Suns is really just front office ownership, you know, like, like if they make poor moves or if they don't, you know, if they don't spend the money and kind of sign the guys and keep, keep DeAndre Ayton, give him a contract, you know, that kind of stuff. That's the only thing that could really, that could really kind of screw up the momentum. But if they take care of everybody and take advantage of this opportunity, you know, for the Suns, where everything's kind of coming together, the stars are aligning, you know what I mean? Like they really got to, they really got to make sure they they take care of everybody, you know. Like, even from like improve the facilities, you know, like if it needs improvement, improve the practice, you know, practice arena and all that sort of stuff. Pay DeAndre Ayton, you know, do all those little things. You know, improve the training staff, you know, like do all that kind of thing. Uh, Gunnar Hoagland goes to uh, Toronto, by the way. That auto for John Alfie's in the Blue Jays. There's Tyler McDonough, Speckle. Yes, we do. 122 to 114. The wrong team goes to 
All right, next little stack here. That's to 250 right here. Genesis, Benny Montgomery for the Rockies. That'll be for Drew. There's Dalen Leal to 499. Colton Kowser. And we got a Steven Hajar, 80 out of 99, green, uh, green chrome autograph. Here's Bowman first for the Twins. Second round pick, Minnesota, John Alfies. I think, and going back to the Lakers really quick, it's, they've got the talent to, to win it all. But here's the problem. Their, their, their margin of error is really narrow. Like, it, they'd, have to, they'd have to play... Everything would have to just click almost too perfectly. Their margin of error is a little, uh, is a little too narrow. Other teams have a little slightly larger margin of error that they could bounce back from. But I mean, obviously anything can happen. They, you can catch lightning in a bottle, but. All right, we are halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen. Got about another 30, 40 minutes to go. I'm definitely dragging a little bit on this one compared to the first case. But we'll get there. Well, you're a lot more confident than I am, Chris Lambros, unless you're just saying it for giggles. Chris saying, I have no reason to believe that the Lakers won't win at all this year. I have zero concerns. That's just for giggles, though, right? Rex, I'm about to pull fire. I already did. I pulled that out of five. Red Chrome. Maybe they're here to. Maybe the fire department's here to collect that. There's Austin Love, Aqua, Lava to 199. I, th I think the Lakers are capable of it, but it's definitely going to be a tough road. Everything has to go, has to be like baby bears porridge. It has to be just right. Again, it's the margin of error. Like, you know, there are a lot of other teams that could afford to 
you know, have an off night, they can bounce back from it or an off stretch of minutes and to be able to bounce back from it. Lakers just don't have that luxury. Chase Petty, Minnesota Twins, John Alfies. They've got a championship caliber team, that's for sure. But like I said, it's the margin of error. That that's where that's where the that's where it comes in. There's West Cath, blue paper to one fifty. Tanner Allen to 499. Yeah, Chris pops into the chat pretty often. Ruben Ibarra. Reds auto for Mark Bissett. Yeah, you'll be around. Yeah, you don't want to put a you don't want to do wagers with him though. I think we've learned our lesson there. <laughs> We got Matthew Nelson, purple paper to 250. I've seen the new, have I seen the new Jimmy Fallon show called That's My Jam? No. What's, uh, what is it about? It sounds, <laughs> I don't know if that really. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm terribly interested in that. There's Wes Cat to 99, and there's Christian Encarnacion Strand at 21 out of 50. Twins, that'll be for John Alfie's. Wes Cath, Green Chrome will go to Derek and the White Sox. Whew, three boxes to go. Thanks for thanks for keeping me company, you guys. Kind of a longer break definitely helps out. It 
It's a music show where celebrities play different games involving music. Doesn't doesn't appeal to me. I would just I would just quit while you're ahead, man. Just forget it. I mean, you know, you don't have to the chat's not legally binding. If you just want to back out of it, that's fine. But I'm not gonna find too many people wanting to bet with you after that. Box to go. One, two, and three. Good. <laughs> Let's not name call Oliver, but. There's Ed Howard to 50. And there's Brendan Beck for the Yankees. 91 out of 499. <laughs> That's an easy bet, Rex. Suns will definitely go further than the Diamondbacks. There's Brendan Beck, second round pick for the Yankees. Ryan Redman, last spot mojo. There's Milcar Perez, purple paper to 250. And there's Steven Hajar again. Base parallel for the Twins. That's going to be for John Alfie's. <laughs> should we, Chris? I feel like we should hire a lawyer to uh, to work up that contract. I feel like that goes against the spirit of the good old fashioned like like bar bet or whatever.
Well, Oliver says he has screenshots. Justin Larson, Happy New Year. Yeah, I, I this is my second draft break in a row. Hands are are cramping a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Chris. You can't. I mean, you can't just change terms of the bet as it goes along. It's all good. Listen, that's not a big deal. You're kind of digging yourself in a hole, though. Just let it go. Hunter Goodman, purple chrome to 250. I mean, half the fun of these futures, but it's like in Vegas. I mean, so you can't can't go to Vegas and be like, hey, well, these injuries, you can void my futures bet, right? Because because of injuries, this is more of a, you know, that's that's the that's the kind of action that we're all about here. I mean, if you sports books aren't going to be like, ah, oh, we'll void your futures bet, Joe, on the on the Lakers because because of these injuries. No, that's not the that's not the way it works. Because I think we're we're very much in the in the Vegas style. The Vegas style of things here. There's Adrian Del Castillo for the Diamondbacks. It's for Mark Bissett and the Snakes. Oh, yeah, listen, real time, yeah, I agree. But it's like, can they stay healthy? That's like, that's the big, that's the big question mark. And so far in the regular season, they've shown they've not. Now, if they all get healthy at the right time, yeah, then anything can happen. But, but that will be the big challenge this year through the regular season and through, and through the playoffs. All right, second to last box. Justin, thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Yeah, my hands are cramping up a little bit, but I got two boxes to go. Almost done. Well... Chris, going forward, if it's really just a, if it's really just a joke, you should probably not accept a bet and just say, "Hey, I'm just kidding. It was a joke." <laughs> but that I, I remember that night. That wasn't that wasn't that wasn't said. Never, never at one point you say, "Just kidding. It's a joke." At the end of that night. So just for next time. Uh, yeah, we pulled uh, out of Bowman Draft, I think last night, Justin Larson, we pulled a Adley Rushman, um, an Adley Rushman one of one, Super Fractor, which I snapped a picture of for our, our social media. Yeah, but I mean, we gotta think of it like a Vegas bet, Chris. I can't, like I said, we got we think of it like a sports book. We can't go, I can't go up to a sports book with my Lakers futures ticket after I've already paid the bet and say, oh, can I get a refund because AD got hurt? Vegas would would laugh me out of the sports book. So just for next time, just so we know, just so we're all clear. There's Alex Belenis, 37 out of 99, green paper.
All right, there's Bubba Chandler to 150 for the Pirates. And we've got Sean Burke, 002 to 150, blue chrome for the White Sox. Derek. There's Alex again, purple paper to 250. And Mason Miller. No, that's our olive ride. I think I, th I, th I think uh, you've made your point. We can let it go now. I think we we know, and I think Chris probably learned a lesson about <laughs> about making and honoring bets. So we can leave it at that. I think everyone's kind of. Kind of said their thing, so I think we can put a button on that. But there's Cameron Colley, purple chrome to two fifty. Rangers, that's for SKS. Jose Torres, paper to 499. Reds, Mark Bissett. And our third autograph is Zane Mills. Ryan Lind and the Cardinals. Zane Mills. Justin, I would love to pull another super. We still have this stack and that box left. Fingers crossed. The super I pulled, the Adley Rushman, was non autoed. But maybe we'll find an autograph super fracture. That would be pretty nice. All right, almost there. Last box, final three autographs. Good luck, everybody. This is Pick Your Team 7. We did Pick Your Team 5 and 7. I know 8 is full, but we're pretty much at the end of our night, so we'll do 8 tomorrow, along with some of the other releases that were delayed until tomorrow. Hopefully they won't be delayed any further, but keep an eye on the website and the show notes for possible changes in that. Um... So eight we'll do tomorrow for sure, though. We have that. 
And then, um, then do we have any more on the site? I think we do. Yeah, we'll have, we have a case for eight back there and then a case for nine. And hopefully that Super Jumbo and Bowman's Best get delivered to us. Um, we've had some, some our sh shipping carriers have been a little delayed on some orders. Some orders are not, so there's been some delays here and there. Hopefully we won't see it, but TBD to be determined for tomorrow. But we'll definitely get Pick Your Team 8 done tomorrow. So we did 5 and 7 today. 8 will be tomorrow. Remember, 6 sold out before 5, so 6 was yesterday, Monday the 3rd. And then we'll do the break credit randomizer. And then uh, after the break credit randomizer, we'll uh, do the autograph recap. Did you? Maybe? Are you psyching yourself out, Joe P? Sometimes I do that too. I'm like, was that, was that Super Fractor Gold? All right, here we go. We got Austin Love. I love the 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 lava parallels that refractors that they've done this year look really sharp. Right there, I think that's that's just a that's just a refractor right there. That's right, real time. Hashtag lava love. Ooh, redemption for the twins. Chase Petty, class of 2021 autograph. That is for John Alfie's and Minnesota. There's Chase Petty, draft night card. I think I've seen some of his autographs live, so I guess maybe just that 2021 insert he didn't get around to. So. Brennan Beck, Yankees, last spot mojo, Ryan Redman. Last spot mojo with a couple hits, I want to say. Blue paper, 404 out of 499, Nick Gonzalez. Okay. 
Some more Colton Kowser. Last stack. Henry Davis. Looking for a third autograph, ladies and gentlemen. Carmelo in the background. Cal Conley, Aqua, 108 out of 199. Blaze Jordan and Mitch Bratt. This Bratt right here, 39 out of 99 is your final autograph. Mitch Bratt, 39 out of 99, green chrome autograph. There's Blaze Jordan, also to 99, green speckle. Kind of harder to see the numbers there. And that's our third and final autograph of this break. And that, my friends, is that. Thank you very much for, uh, for hanging with me throughout this long break. I appreciate it. Let's give away some money. Let's do an autograph recap. And then I think we're going to call it a night. I am beat. But I'm glad we got these two breaks done. We're going to uh, have another very busy day tomorrow as well. All right. Let's flip back here. I think it was. Yeah, we pulled a few of those. All the chrome card chips, just the paper that won't chip. All right, so I have some new dice, new list. Let's sort that by column A. There's Anthony with two teams. That's an entry. EA with four teams. That's two entries. John got two teams. That's an entry. Karen got two teams, that's an entry. Mark Bissett got four teams, that's two entries. Marty got two teams, that's an entry. Ryan Lynn bought two teams, that's an entry. Ryan Redmond got last spot mojo and won a team. So that's two teams, one entry. And SKS, two teams, one entry. All right, so we got Anthony. EA, John, Karen, Mark, Marty, Ryan, Ryan Redmond, and SKS. All right. There's the dice. There's the list right here. Pretty good odds. Top five. Top five after seven. We'll get $100 of break credit each per the rules here. Top five after seven. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five, six, and good luck. Seventh and final time. After seven, we got Anthony, John, Ryan, Karen, and SKS. $100 of break credit each going your way. Thanks very much, everybody. That was 2021 Bowman Draft Jumbo. Eight boxes. Pick your team number seven. A lot of nice color, a lot of nice autographs. We got that out of five, Cooper Kinney. Got that for the Rays. There was a Braves hit there. Love the lava and Hunter at the very beginning. That was Pick Your Team 7. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.